I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Welcome to Rama Praise. We're so glad that you're with us today. I'm talking about God's abundance. You know, the Bible tells us that he wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. You know, some people, when you start talking about abundance, they want to go overboard this direction and get way out of there. And then you go, some other people won't go there. Well, no, you're not supposed to have a whole lot and all that. Well, the word of God talks about he has abundance. Yes. But you got to know what God's word has to say about it. And it can't just be something that somebody dreamed up. It's what God said about it. The reality of the abundance is found in the word of God. Yes. Let's go now where I'm talking about God's abundance. Tonight, I'm calling this God's picture of abundance. Now, you know, people that are successful have a certain mindset. They cultivate a cer certain thoughts and ideas that allows them to be successful. Now, I want to look at a verse of scripture that you're very familiar with, John 10:10. 10, 10. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The Amplified Version says, I came that they may have, have and enjoy life. I want you to notice that, may have and enjoy life. You could just say have life and enjoy, and enjoy life. And have it in abundance till it to, to the full, till it overflows. The message says, I came so they can have real and eternal life, real life and eternal life, more and better life than they've ever dreamed of. Now, these, that's painting a picture of God's abundance right there. Now, the Albert Barnes, in his notes on the Bible, he said John 10, 10 literally means that we have an abundance are that which abounds. He goes on to say the word denotes that which is not absolutely essential to life, but a super added, something super added to make life happy. They shall not merely have life, simple, bare existence, but they shall have all these super added things which are needed to make life eminently blessed and happy. Now, that's what Albert Barnes says in his notes on the Bible. When we look at the promises of God, we actually can see that he wants us to have a life of abundance and health and freedom, peace, victory. And God always has more than we can imagine or think. God wants us to have the best. He wants us to, to live an abundant life. You know, there are some people that criticize the message of faith and the abundant life. But listen, just because they don't like it, doesn't, that doesn't change the Bible. The Bible's still the same. Should we quit preaching faith and abundance just because Somebody is displeased with it? Should we allow a few critical people to keep us from receiving what the Word of God tells us we can have? You know, sometimes there's, what, what I give a title here, is some spiritual bullies that want to control the ideas of how God's people should live. And they put a lot of do's and don'ts and restrictions. There are, in the Word of God, there are do's and don'ts, but it's not man-made, you know? Like, 
the dress has changed over a period of years now. Used to, we'd all be in here with a suit and tie on and so forth and so on. But you know, there are still some people that are saying, you know, at Hagen, he's lost it. He don't have it anymore because he don't wear a tie. I had a guy say something to me one time to the effect about not wearing a tie. <laughs> and I, I, this is exactly what I did. He said, you know, how can you have the spirit if you're not dressed up with a suit and tie on? And I looked at him and I said, let me ask you a question. Did Jesus, Paul, John, did Peter, did they wear ties? I said, they had, they had to move. They, they, <laughs> you know, isn't it funny how sometimes people want to try to make their rules what you're supposed to do? Line it up with the Bible, okay? Now, I think we ought to, you know, I think we ought to have some decor when we come to church and uh, dress. We don't have to have suit and tie on, but we, we don't have to be sloppy either, okay? So, let me finish on. I just, I just throw that in there. Do we stop preaching the message of faith and prosperity and abundance just because some people have misused it? misapplied it no God said it in his word I have come that they might have and enjoy life and have it to the abundance to the full till it overflows did you know you either choose to live in the abundance that God said you can or live on barely get along street right next to Grumble Alley it's up to you you know, it's time for us to realize that God is waiting on us because he's already done everything he's going to do. All we've got to do is get in the Word and realize what the Word says and then begin to believe the promises of God and begin to live in the promises of God. You see, God's truth it, 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 it's, it's for abundance. You know, some people have set boundaries, you know, and they sort of, I don't know, sometimes some, some Christian people think that it's humility, showing that their, their humility when they live on barely get a long street. Well, I don't, think, I don't think Abraham lived on barely get a long street. Anybody ever read about Abraham? And you know what? In Galatians chapter 3, it says that the blessing of Abraham can come on us. He lived in abundance. Go, go study it. Go read it in the Old Testament. Come on now. You know, when dad was first raised off a of bed of affliction, I mean, he had strong faith for healing. And he went out on the road and started preaching and yeah, man, but I'll tell you what. We were living under the barrel. You, if you've heard him, he said he wasn't at the bottom of the barrel. He's under the barrel. But he had to learn that the same God that wanted him to have healing and he used faith to get it was the same thing way that he was going to get the abundance of life. And I tell you what, I sure was glad when we learned that because it wasn't no fun. <laughs> I mean, I always looked forward when I was a kid, I looked forward to Sunday because we, we had roast on Sunday. The rest of the time we had beans and cornbread. Until Dad got in and began, began to study and realized that God wanted us to have an abundance in life. So that's God's picture of abundance is a lot different than a lot of people think. God has the abundance, the resources for us to live in. You know, 
When you're talking about abundance, you're talking about more than enough. More than enough. Not just enough, but more than enough. Now, if you're going to get a hold of the abundance of God, you've got to see the reality of, of abundance in the Word of God. That's, and he paints a pretty good picture of that. Here it is. Daniel, I mean Deuteronomy 8, 18. Now I'm going to read a bunch of scripture here, so stay with me. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed, he confirmed to your ancestors with an oath. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 8. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. Your offspring and your herds and flocks will, the offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit, ba your fruit baskets and bread, bread boards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will be scattered from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouse with grain. The Lord God will bless you in the land that he has given you. That sounds like abundance to me, doesn't it, to you? Joshua 1, 8. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. Psalms 1, 2, and 3. But they, de but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaf never withers, and they prosper in all they do. Psalms 23, 1. <laughs> The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. And then verse 5, you prepare, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Yeah. Psalms 37, 25. Once I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessings of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithe into the storehouse so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room for it to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Matthew 6.33, we all know it. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Luke 6, 38, we know this one. Give, and you'll receive. Your gift will return to you full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over, poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Philippians 4, 19. And the same God who takes care of me, this is Paul writing, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I believe that just from those few scriptures that uh, God wants us to have an abundance. Amen. Hello. I think these, these, per, these paint a pretty good picture of God's abundance. These verses don't take the place of the rest of the Bible. But neither can you exclude these verses. Okay? If abundance and plenty, plenty, <laughs> plenty and riches are mentioned in the Bible, then it's right for us to have those things. You know, there's some people think, well, now you better be careful. You about this. This prosperity business and this abundance business, 
You know, it can get you off course. Well, God wants you to have abundance. These verses paint a picture of us being blessed. He wants us to have an abundant life. He wants us to have more than enough. Norman Vincent Peale said this in his book, Power of Positive Thinking. There seems to be an invisible reservoir of abundance in the universe that can be tapped into by obeying certain spiritual laws. As I was reading those scriptures there, there was a, several of them said, told you to do something in order to be blessed. Didn't they? You know, when we begin to get a hold of the fact what the Word of God has to say about abundance, we can begin to live in the abundance of God. You know, some people, I've had people say, well, look at them. Look how they're, they're, look how, how they're being blessed. I said, yeah, they're doing what God told them to do. I said, they're giving. They're, they are going to church. They're giving of their time and their talents and their finances. See, there's a lot of people that want to do part of it, but they don't want to do the rest of it. Well, I'm giving, yeah, but uh, are you serving? That's part of getting the abundance. And by serving God in some capacity, somewhere, he wants everybody serving in some capacity. I better go on before I get in trouble. I can see that y'all are putting the brakes on, so I'll go on. We've got to develop a mentality of God's abundance. All too often, people are enslaved by their own thoughts and their own ideas rather than the thoughts and the ideas from the Word of God that releases you. I've heard people say, well, you know, Grandpa, this this way Grandpa was and this way Daddy lived, so I guess this is the way I have to live too. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know what? The life you have is greatly determined by the thoughts you think in your mind. And there's a good little book right out there in that bookstore called Right and Wrong Thinking, written by a fellow that I'm named after. And he, he, he talks about wrong thinking, get you nothing. Right thinking in line with God's word, get you all the blessings. And that's what we're talking about tonight, okay? You know, we need to develop the idea that God has it and he wants us to have it. You know, some... They used to say back when I was growing up as a kid in Pentecostal circles, they'd pray, they'd pray, Lord bless me and John, us, my family. You bless the pastor. You keep him humble, we'll keep him poor. <laughs> used to, they thought the, they thought the pastor wasn't supposed to make anything. And the minute he made one dollar more than somebody else in the church, he is making too much. Thank God those days are gone. I lived those days. <laughs> you know, we develop certain thoughts and ideas in our heads, and they have to be in line with God's Word so we can receive God's Word. I don't care what brother so-and-so said. I don't care what this guy said or that guy said or prophet this or apostle this or whatever. If it's not in line with the Word of God, I'm going to throw it out the window. I said, oh, well, you better be careful. I'm not talking against anybody. All I'm saying is if what people are saying is not in line with the Word of God, leave it alone. Paul even said, told his constituents, he said, if I or somebody else comes teaching 
different than I've taught you, forget about it. I'm going to paraphrase it in our language. Anybody ever read that in there? Go read it. Paul wrote it. Read it. God wants us to think like he thinks. He thinks in abundance. He thinks in blessing. So we need to get in line with his thinking. T.L. Osborne said this in his book, How to Enjoy Plenty. When the mind perceives God's abundance and begins to comprehend that he created the wealth of this earth for the blessings of his children, the walls of mental enslavement begin to crumple, crumble and the rainbow of God's plenty appears. You see, you know, I, I guess I, I had the privilege of knowing a lot of these people personally. It was my dad was part of the group that traveled from that 47 to 58 healing revival, and I graduated from high school in 58, so I knew, I knew Brother Osborne, I knew Oral, I knew, you, you name them, I knew them personally. If we want to enjoy God's blessings and abundance, we first have to develop the mental attitude or the mental mindset that God wants us to have abundance. God has abundance. His Word tells us, the Word of God tells us about His abundance. And if you get in the Word and study it, then you can find out what belongs to you. Yes. And you can claim it according to the Word of God. You know, honey, talking about abundance, um, wow. One of our offers is uh, your book called Overflow, Living Above Life's Limits. Yes. And on here is a picture of, of Victoria Falls and talking about an abundance of water. Oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Because this is an actual photo that you were standing. In fact, your, your silhouette is on here. And it's an actual photo of your standing in front of Victoria Falls or part of the, I mean, it goes for however long it goes. It, yeah, yeah it, it's big. It is. Um, but um, that's one. And then uh, your dad's three CDs on a fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Uh -huh. and, and then, then yours. Yes, I have a CD on fuel your passion for God. And how we fuel our passion for God is through prayer. Right. And of course, reading his word as well. Right. And, and these are all available for a gift of $35 or more. Yes. Go right now to rhema.org on your computer, your device, whatever, yes. and they'll get shipped right out to you. Okay. That's right. Rhema Christmas lights on really, really soon. November 22nd at 6 yes. p.m. And then, and then of course, we have our Wednesday night service. After that. After yes. that. And, and mm -hmm in the Rama Church Auditorium. That's right. And then, uh, you know, they stay on till mm -hmm. January the 1st at 11.30, they go off. They come on November 22nd at 6 p.m. Yes. And they go off at 11.30. They're a sight to see. Yes. If you've never seen them, you need, if you're close enough to come, you need to come and That's see right. the Rama Christmas lights. You can go to RamaLights.org and you can see pictures, but it does not do them justice. No, no. And you have to walk through the park. Oh my goodness, the park is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. beautiful. And uh, there's music that goes with the with the lights on. It is gorgeous. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, we are, oh, a cell, a cyber cell, November the 27th through the 28th, uh, starts on Monday at 12.01 a.m. and goes through Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Central yes. Standard Time, 50% off of our Faith Library publications, publications. Uh, books and uh, CDs, except and the Legacy Bible. Except the Legacy Bible. That's right. That's online only. So yes. this is a good time uh, to refill your library because probably you've given people, you know, some of our products and you didn't get them back. 
<laughs> yes. And so, and also, I'll tell you what, these products are good stocking stuffers. Yeah. Yes. You can go to rhema.org for all the details. That's They're all right. there. But also, we are in taking uh, applications for yes. January enrollment. That's for right. The, for the Rhema Bible Training College. College. Yes. You can go to rbtc.org slash apply and get all the information there. That's right. But you know, uh, of course, we stream on all kinds of different things that we stream yes. on. Yes, yes. But we are now streaming, there's a new one we're streaming on uh, called Rumble. Yes. And that's where we're streaming on Rumble. And I, all the other ones, let's see, we, we're on uh, YouTube, our Rama, Rama mm -hmm. USA, Face, YouTube. Facebook Live. Facebook Live, Rama.tv. Yes. All, all of these and our church services, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, 6 p.m. Sunday evening, and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. That's right. And, you know, if you want to know anything about Rama yes. and Kenneth Hagin Ministry, just go to rhema.org and everything is there. That's you got right. things you can read online, daily devotions. Mm -hmm. That, uh, there, there's things that you can uh, download. That's right. And, and j just uh, all kinds of stuff. And on Roku, that. you can go to the Arama USA channel. Uh, we have over 75,000 subscribers yes. now. Yes. So we, you can get us somewhere. That's right. Some way. iPad, hours a I, day. iPad, <laughs> iPhone, Android, Google Play. That's we're, right. We're, we're, somebody, we're everywhere. Somebody said we're everywhere. <laughs> but we're just trying to reach people with the truth of the Word of God. Yes. And it's because of you, our partners, that are helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the world. world. I'll be anointed fresh oil. Glory. The place was shaken. The place where they were. That means the house shook, bless God. The building shook. There's such a manifestation. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That just it means they got a fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. Three faith building CDs by Kenneth E. Hagan. Overflow, Living Above Life's Limits. An anointed book by Kenneth W. Hagan. Filled up with the anointing of God. Filled up. And a CD by Lynette Hagen. Fuel your passion for God. All four CDs and the book can be yours today for a gift of only $35 or more by calling toll-free 1-888-PRAISE-8. Or you can order anytime, day or night, at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.